Hi there. I'm back with another mini episode of Unlocking Lessons Learned with me, Amrita Tripathi. Today, I'm going to talk about something that I love to do. I don't love to talk about. In fact, I don't know any writer who loves to talk about it, but I'm going to talk about writing. This is something that um, folks, of course, ask many questions about. You might have seen the video we've done already. I think there's a part one to this, if I haven't um, made any mistakes. Uh, and I'm going to just share this little screenshot to explain why I have the audacity to talk about how to write a book. How do you get a book published? That's another part. That's the other chapter. If you watch some of our videos, you know that imposter syndrome is something that comes uh, to many of us when we're trying out new things. I definitely had imposter syndrome when my first book came out. Um, it was called Broken News, came out back in 2010. And um, I loved the whole process and I love being commissioned and I love the book and I got great reactions. But I wasn't really sure I could call myself an author or a writer. And that only really happened when my second novel came out, which was five years later in 2015, The is Not. This was a darker work of contemporary fiction. This was something which, you know, you could really tell my craft had improved. I had to work on, um, you know, my writing a lot. I had to really um, chisel away and edit and take out things and add things and just make sure that the story held uh, in a way it was more of a challenge than the first book. And um, it's only with the second novel that I started saying, you know what, I'm a writer. So that imposter syndrome took care of itself once the book started coming out. And um, I've taken a break on the fiction till actually this year, though it might be too soon to share more on that just yet. But, you know, I've also written nonfiction. I've co-authored these books um, that you see there, The Age of Anxiety, Young Mental Health, Real Stories of Dealing with Depression and Life Interrupted. These are very serious books of nonfiction, uh, you know, written in a conversational style, I would say. You know, we, we attempted to be as, as accessible as possible and try to make uh, difficult subjects very friendly and easier to understand because that has been the mission with the Health Collective. Um, we had fantastic um, cover design and illustrations. And, um, you know, Mridu, shout out to you if you're watching this. I think that really only helped. But, you know, I'm going to dial it back a little bit. We're going to talk today about writing and getting the writing done. I'm more than happy to do a session later on getting published. Uh, we may or may not do our own masterclass. I'm talking to a couple of friends who are writers about that because we've had a few requests for actual creative writing workshops, I guess. And everyone's doing workshops now, so you never know. But for the moment, let me pick up where we left off on the storytelling part one, which if you've watched and if I remember correctly, essentially says start writing, start making time to write. The gist of it is nobody can really give you their secret sauce, uh, but they can tell you what's worked for them. And then you can you know, you can go from there. I was talking about the masterclass with Margaret Atwood in that episode. I love her. I love that masterclass. Highly recommend if you have the budget. I'm going to talk about a little bit of what I've learned along the way, but I'm also going to reference a masterclass by the wonderful Mr. Neil Gaiman. Do you notice that I've highlighted notes here? Like that's how much of a nerd I am. But that's how you know I'm giving you the real stuff that I've actually made note of and which I think might be helpful. Little embarrassed that I just showed you that. Okay, so this masterclass with Neil Gaiman, I did several years ago. Again, um, it, you know, it, it does cost actual money to do. And if you can get someone to reimburse you for it, please go ahead and do it. If you can afford it, go ahead and do it. I love the masterclass. I also love his writing. I think I, I love all his books. Um, so I'm going to pick out some of the points I think are helpful. So we, we start from that whole premise that you have watched the first video or at least a gist of it, which I just summarized, which is get started. Decide that you're going to make time for yourself, invest in yourself by carving out that time. It doesn't have to be daily. Daily would be lovely. But many of us have busy lives and, you know, this might be a hobby and you're not sure what's going on in your life. So weekly is fine. Take that, you know, couple of hours slot on a Saturday morning or a Sunday morning or a late afternoon when no one's going to be disturbing you and just sit down, put off the Wi-Fi. I would love for you to do pen to paper, but I know that for a lot of us now that's a bit impractical. Um you can still do it. I, I still think it's really helpful for notes and jotting down. And as I said, my first novel, I did <laughs> write longhand. So if you can, go for it. I, I do think it's a different kind of wiring, as I've told a few people. Um, I have to look that one up. But 
you've decided to start and you're starting. So how do you actually start? I think in the Margaret Atwood case, we were talking about how a lot of people don't start with a plot, actually. You start with the characters or the voice or some, something comes to you. I have a couple of the notes that I have from um, the Neil Gaiman Masterclass. Um, double underlined, be honest. All fiction has to be as honest as you can. I wanted to start with this because it's such an important point to understand. There's someone famous who said that they read fiction to get at the truth and non-fiction uh, to get at what people uh, imagine because you know memoirs are notoriously sort of self-serving and <laughs> not always uh, encapsulating the entire truth whereas really good fiction if you think about it gets to the heart of reality it gets to the heart of the human condition it can move you it can elevate your soul it can leave you with something lasting you might not remember the exact plot points later but you'll remember something of the sort of universal essence of that story. I don't want to get too um, esoteric on you uh, or to use too much jargon as I keep saying, but let's go through a few points. Um, and you know, one of the things is how do you get inspired? So Neil Gaiman has this thing. Um, he says, that, you know, think of it as a compost heap, everything you read, things you listen to, people you meet, and you actually don't have to um, just think about just the things you think you like. He says this, and I love it. Your influences are not necessarily the things you think they are. You just keep listening to people. Um, you know, you'll see a lot of writers like sort of little, with little notebooks making notes in cafes and conversations. Say hi to my dog. Hi, Rubes. Uh, keeps me honest. Tells me when I'm getting boring and rambling also, but I digress. Um, you can totally write a story if you want. You can kick off a story with, and the dog shook her head on the sofa, the multicolored sofa, if you want. So... Coming back to everything is potentially inspiration. You can, just as a practice session, as he says, um, he talks about subversion a little bit, subvert the element, um, take a folk or fairy tale and turn it around, try and look at it as if it's from the first time, see where the bits are that don't make sense, and then try and write it using it as a framework or a mirror to bounce ideas off, you know, try and make it yours. Of course, he's done this very, very famously with many of his books. But these are sort of thought experiments. He also says to go on and make up stories about people around you, sort of to get that writing muscle going, right? Because some of us have forgotten how to write in a way that's not kind of bullet points and presentation slides and whatnot. So just get your writing muscle back. Um, follow any of these thought experiments. It could be my dog. It could be someone in your neighborhood. Uh, make up stories about people around you. And I love this because I think, um, you know, we're not going to be able to pack everything into this uh, video, even though I do aim for like 10 to 12 minutes. Uh, attention spans aren't what they used to be. But I love this thing that he says, we don't know where we get our ideas from. And I think he said this, or, or at least I put it in brackets, that authors hate this. I'm pretty sure he said this. Um, he says this is like from a confluence. So coming back to sort of a compost heap of ideas, you are getting your ideas from things you've seen or thought and known about or something else you've seen and thought and known about. And then he says that, you know, you can collide those things and something new forms. But again, don't restrict yourself to just be like, I'm the kind of person who only likes to read detective fiction. So I'm only going to write a detective uh, novel or, a cri or crime fiction. That's not really how this works. So you need to sit down, clear your head, try and do a few thought experiments or writing exercises. Now, you can ignore all of this if you're already in the groove and you started writing and you're like, why is this woman babbling on for eight and a half minutes when I really want to know what the next steps are? Well, one of those next steps is finding your voice. I think any of us who uh, have, you know, sort of had that writer's engine or have been writing for a long time will remember those really embarrassing early days when we sounded like someone else. In my case, I think I have this in a diary somewhere where I had just written Italo. I'd written Italo, well, we know in college and all of a sudden, my writing was so derivative, like there were trees upside down and I don't know what was going on. But looking back, I can't help but laugh. It's a little cringe, cringe worthy, but I'm sharing that with you. We all start out by, you know, sort of some sort of pale imitation. Do, you know, get through that phase as quickly as you can. Find your voice. And the other thing is that it's OK if they're not good stories initially, you know, of, you know, maybe you're stuck at one story and I'm, I'm just making you feel worse by saying stories. That's not the intention. Maybe you're writing something and you're like, oh my God, this is garbage. And literally I have lost track of the number of people who've told me this. And number of people, I mean, my friends or acquaintances or people who are like, listen, I want to write a book. You wrote a book. How hard can it be? Um, the, what I'm writing is garbage. Just get it out. Finish it. Finish what you started. And this is not just me saying it. This is Neil Gaiman saying, finish things. 
finish things. He says, everything you do as a young writer is important to find your voice. I'll take out the age thing there, but everything you do as a writer is important to find your voice. And I've highlighted this. The most important thing is to write. Finish things if you like. As you finish things, you learn, and you learn more from finishing and failing than writing a success. So again, those are from my notes of the Neil Gaiman Masterclass please go ahead and watch that masterclass, make your own notes if you can. Um, and you can come back to me and tell me what you think. It's very early stages in that, I think the first couple of um, chapters of that masterclass. And then he goes on to, of course, how you develop the story and so on. If there's interest, I'm gonna go back to my notes and share more with you. But I really think that the important thing for you at this stage is to know that you can do this. And literally, you're going to tell yourself you can do this and you're going to do this. Now, I don't think we need any more terrible writing in the world. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I do think if you have a story you want to tell, if you want to be a writer, please, there are too many gatekeepers. Do not think that you can't do it. Just try and be the best writer you can be. That was advice I got. Uh, the other thing I will say, and it's a little bit late in the video to say this, but let me leave you with this thought. If you're not a reader, if you don't read stories, if you don't love stories in whatever form, I just want to understand why you want to be a writer. So tell me in the comments. If you're not a reader, how it is you want to be a writer? Let me know how you go.